Coming off one of the wildest and greatest WrestleMania main events of all time, WrestleMania 40, this was the first Raw under the Triple H era, officially. Full creative control, right? He was obviously in creative last year. He did not have full control over last year's show. So tonight was a Paul Levesque production. And in the past, we've had a lot of really wild post-media episodes of Raw. I've had the great pleasure of being part of them myself. I've been in some of those crowds, and it got pretty wild. This was not like those shows. Tonight's episode of Raw, I didn't really know what to expect because they didn't announce anything. They left it very open-ended. We knew that we had a new World Heavyweight Champion. We knew that we had a new WWE Champion. This is the beginning of the Cody Rhodes era. That's all we knew coming into tonight's episode of Raw. It was not as wild as the Aftermanias of old. Uh, the show actually, I thought, peaked with the opening segment. And after that, it felt like a mostly ordinary episode of Raw. Didn't really feel terribly special. It didn't feel like, hey, this is a different, a different Raw. It's got a different vibe or a different feel to it. Not really, after that opening segment with The Rock. But I can tell you this. There is one thing I can confidently sit here and tell you, is that I was sitting in this chair a year ago after WrestleMania 39 when Raw went on the air that night. And I can safely say that this show tonight is a hell of a lot better than the one we got last year. And that might be low praise, but it was better than that pile of steaming shit that we had after WrestleMania in 2023. So that's a plus. We did have The Rock back on Raw tonight. The Rock has made more appearances on TV than he did probably in either of his previous runs combined. The last time he came back to the company, the last time he was in, he was working against Cena. I mean, he's been appearing pretty consistently on TV, on Raw and SmackDown now for many weeks. So we got another Rock appearance after two straight nights of Rock appearances at WrestleMania. And that's coming off a Rock appearance on Raw last week. So he was back tonight to confront Cody Rhodes in the opening segment of the show. And he made it very clear, 
Our story is just beginning. Your story with Roman Reigns is over. You and me, we're just getting started. And he made it very clear that he wants the WWE Championship. He wanted to hold it. It was a little awkward, to be honest with you. Uh, him out there wanting to hold the title. But that direction now, it was pretty much speculated coming out of WrestleMania. But that direction now is pretty clear. That we're going to get Rock and Cody. And again, they get two big matches out of it now instead of just one. With what they ended up doing for the WrestleMania build, instead of just doing Rock and Roman one and done, Rock goes away. Now you've got Rock and Cody that you can build to. And still, in your back pocket for WrestleMania next year, you've got Rock and Roman Reigns. So we know that's coming. We also had a four-way to crown a new number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship, which is now owned by Damian Priest, who cashed in his money in the bank of WrestleMania. He now has the big gold belt on, on Raw. Big gold junior, I guess we'll call it. And Jey Uso is the number one contender for the championship, which I guess explains why he beat Jimmy at WrestleMania on night one. CM Punk made a cameo at the very end of the show, and he screwed over Drew McIntyre for the second consecutive night. So Drew McIntyre is out there losing his mind, and Punk is having the time of his life because McIntyre has been trolling him now for weeks and weeks and weeks ever since the Royal Rumble. Over two months, this was Punk's revenge. Drew McIntyre will have to wait a little bit longer to get another crack at the World Heavyweight title. And also on the show tonight, we even had a little cameo, second cameo here from John Cena, who technically had a match tonight. This after his cameo on night two of WrestleMania. We had a pair of NXT champions make their main roster uh, debut. Although this was not their full-time call-up tonight, we had the NXT champion Ilya Dragunov in action. We had the NXT women's champion Roxanne Perez. And the purpose of them appearing on the show tonight is because now we have dates the WWE Draft. The draft is going to begin on Raw on April 29th. Uh, well, that'll be the second night of the draft. It's going to kick off on SmackDown. But April 26th and April 29th are the dates for the 2024 WWE Draft. Makes all the sense in the world to keep the draft after WrestleMania. That's frankly where it always should have been. Triple H has the right idea. If you're going to do a draft, you do it coming out of your biggest event of the year. And that is what he's going to do. So I feel like we're in a lame duck period here because this roster is going to change and the SmackDown roster is going to change and they're going to look very different a month from now than they do today. So a lot of these feuds and matches that we're talking about, you know, it may get shaken up and it may not even make a difference four weeks from now. We'll have to see how it all shakes out. But we are going to have NXT involvement in the draft. That was confirmed through these appearances by uh, Dragunov and Roxanne tonight. We also got a commercial-free first hour of the show. And I know they think it's a big draw for them, and ratings-wise, maybe it is. Ooh, commercial-free, right? It sounds good. It sounds good. But it's like a it's like a shyster who's trying to sell you something on the street. You know, are they going to offer you a real good deal, right? What's the catch? Well, the catch with the commercial-free first hours is that it absolutely butchers the final hour of the show. And that's exactly what happened on the show. It made the third hour of tonight's show Completely insufferable. And it took what was a good main event, a four-way match that they had with McIntyre and Ricochet and Jey Uso and Bronson Reed, and it basically butchered the main event. Because you have to still have all the same commercial breaks. You've got to fit them in at a different point in the show. And so they kind of bunched them up there at the end. And I just thought it made for just an insufferable viewing experience for that main event, which is too bad because it looked like it was a pretty decent match. Uh, I've actually grown to hate these commercial-free first hours because of that. I just think it just completely disrupts the flow of the rest of the show. But really, Rock and Cody was the big story here. Obviously, Punk and Drew, their issue was still continuing. We already knew that. But when the show was over, it felt like it was a good episode of Raw, but it was not the sort of wild and crazy night of unexpected things that you would look for in the post-mania edition of Raw. Again, we had a Cena cameo, which, you know, we didn't know about going in, and it was nice to see some NXT representation on the show. Uh, but this will not go down as one of the more, I think, uh, wild and crazy post-mania editions of Raw, but 
Uh, not a bad show. This is your Monday Night Raw review for April 8th, 2024. I am the Solo Monster. Like and subscribe. Five. Oh, boy. Hey, Jackie. Jackie Fowler. Jacqueline Fowler, thank you for the $25. Yes, Super Chats are open. Hit that like button. Uh, 500 likes is the goal tonight for Be The Booker. Before we get into this review, I want to say thank you uh, to everybody who tuned in to all or some of my WrestleMania coverage this weekend. It's been a very busy several days. Going back to Thursday, we had night one, night two of WrestleMania. There was a podcast in between episode 856. If you missed it, make sure you check that out. Uh, but we are nearing 100,000 views for my WrestleMania coverage this weekend, and you guys came out in, in full force with the support, especially last night. And so I just wanted to take a moment here to say thank you. It was a very uh, exhausting weekend, but uh, I'm kind of glad it's over, and now we can turn the page and we can move on as we uh, continue into the month of April. Let's take it back to the beginning here. Hour number one, commercial free. Show kicks off with Triple H's music. You hear Motorhead. Paul Levesque makes his way down to the ring. Michael Cole on commentary uh, pointed out that tonight there were 20,248 fans in attendance for their 17th consecutive television sellout. Very curious to see how much longer that continues for. I would suspect not that much longer. They're going to continue to pack the buildings in. In terms of sellouts, though, I'll be very impressed that they can hit 18, 19, 20, 21 and keep it going without Roman and without The Rock, who made it clear that he's going away. The Rock, the Rock flat out said he's got to go away for a while. Now, I don't know that that means he won't be on SmackDown this week. But after this week, The Rock is, I think he's uh, filming for a movie that he's doing. He's playing Mark Kerr, a former MMA fighter in a movie. So he's going to be going away. Can they sustain this? Can they continue to sell out week after week? Now that WrestleMania is over, Rock is leaving, Cody has finished his story. Very curious to see how that works out. But they were packed in tonight, and because they had so many people in the building, they were using the same stage and setup that they had on SmackDown Friday night, which is that uh, minimalist setup. There's no big Tron. I love it. I love it. I, I wouldn't mind them using that on a regular basis. And my attitude has always been, when you're hot, you're hot. And if you think you can sell those extra tickets that would normally be behind the set, and I don't know how many hundred more tickets it might be, if you could sell those tickets, then fucking sell them. Why are you going to have a whole section of empty seats when you know the demand is there and you can sell those seats? So I'd be doing the same thing if I were them. And so I don't mind the uh, the minimalist setup. But he gets in the ring and a Triple H chant breaks out in the building. Fans followed by chanting, thank you, Hunter. Boy, it's just been a big uh, Paul Levesque love fest this weekend, hasn't it? They made a bit... They could not have made it any more clear on commentary and with Stephanie last night, you know, that it's her husband's era. They keep mentioning his name. You know, for a guy like Cody last night said he's going to be kicking and screaming if I tell him to come out here, but Triple H, come on out here. Or Paul Heyman at the Hall of Fame, you know, him not wanting his name mentioned and stuff. For a guy who uh, they talk about being so modest, they have gone all out and letting you know that it is the Paul Levesque era. And he opens the show here. I think he's getting very used to his new role. So he said that he came out here to thank us, not the other way around. And he said that less than 24 hours ago, the fans made something very special happen. He says, I can now tell you that last night or this weekend was the greatest WrestleMania of all time. And it wasn't. Uh, but it ended up being a, a very good WrestleMania. That main event on Sunday night may have been, may have been uh, the best main event of WrestleMania history. I mean, I had more fun watching that than any other main event I could think of. So by that metric and that criteria, I'm comfortable sitting here 24 hours later and saying it may well have been the greatest main event in WrestleMania history, greatest WrestleMania of all time. Let's not get carried away. So he said that he had the privilege of welcoming us to uh, WrestleMania this weekend and now here the privilege of doing the same on Raw. And he recalled welcoming us to a, a new era, a new time. And he said that he wanted to introduce the fans to the man. 
who is going to lead this new era of WWE. And he introduced us to the brand new undisputed WWE Universal Heavyweight Champion, Cody Rhodes. And for those of you hoping that Cody would come out tonight and would unveil a new belt, whether it's an eagle or some other design, I'm sorry to say that did not happen. The giant logo belts are here to stay. Although he did get new nameplates. And I like it because the uh, American Nightmare logo has a little bit of red, white, and blue. So it's got some color to it. So they changed out the side plates, but it's the same mustard belt that Roman was using. Cody comes out and he is in his suit. He's got his belt draped over his shoulder. And he shakes hands with Triple H, kisses the belt, raises it in the air. Everyone's cheering for Cody. And Levesque says that he wanted to say before he leaves, he wanted to just let Cody know, congratulations. And he said, Cody absolutely deserves it. Congratulated him for ending one of the longest reigns and greatest reigns of all time in the history of WWE. He said, Cody's first night as champion set a new gate record for Raw with over 20,000 fans in the building. He said he got a call. One last thing he wanted to mention here. He got, a, he got a call two hours after the show last night. He said the call came from a couple of guys in the studio who said they made something very special for Cody. And they wanted uh, Levesque to make sure that he would share it with him. And Triple H said, hell no, I'm going to share it with everyone. And he said that they set up monitors in the aisleway because we're, we're bootlegging it, he says. We're going to go bootleg tonight because we have so many people in the building that we don't have our usual Tron, so people won't be able to see this video. And they moved uh, these... Uh, you know reminded me of? Remember the uh, Boiler Room Brawl from SummerSlam in 96? Where Undertaker and Mankind, they started their match in the Boiler Room, and the objective was to fight all the way back to the ring. Well, back then, you didn't have the big screens anyway. So what they did was they took these CRT televisions, you know, back then it was like the big TVs, and they put them on TV stands in the crowd so that people can see. That's basically what they did here. They rolled out a cart or multiple carts in the aisleway and put uh, TVs on it so that the people in the crowd could see the video. And they proceeded to play a video to the, to the tune of Andra Day's Rise Up, that was the song they used. And it was a very nice video. It was basically highlights from Cody's career going all the way back to when he was Stardust and dashing Cody Rhodes. They had still shots of Cody after he had left WWE. So when he was wrestling in New Japan, a Ring of Honor, and they showed him in Brandy. And then, after Cody's run in New Japan, a Ring of Honor, as we all know, he made a triumphant return to WWE. He did not do anything else in the meantime. He went right from New Japan back to WWE in 2022, and they showed him rising from the stage when he made his return against Seth Rollins a couple of years ago. Nothing else happened in between now and then. Man, not even still shots. Not, not even like a little, not, not even a photograph or anything like that, right? Amazing. So anyway. It's a very nice video, and they had a shot of Cody on the screen also as they were showing the video, and he was getting very emotional. So when the video was over, Cody was uh, crying, and he hugged Triple H, very long, extended hug. Triple H left the ring at that point, left it all alone to Cody, who said he laid the belt on the mat, and he got down on his knees, and he kissed the belt. So, he says, Raw after WrestleMania, Philadelphia, what do you want to talk about? He turned his attention to Samantha Irvin, and he asked her, please, just one more time. And she stood up, she obliged, and she introduced him once more as the new undisputed WWE Universal Champion. It was two years ago, the Raw after Mania, where he said he laid out his goals and it was on Raw that night that he told the story about Dusty having the belt taken away from him at Madison Square Garden. And they put the picture up on the Titan Tron that night of him holding the belt up before it was taken away from him. So that's when they really started telling this story. 
He said he and the fans right now are on top of the mountain. And he mentioned the previous champion, Roman Reigns. He acknowledged his 1,316 days as champion. Fans broke into a thank you Roman chant. How about that? Paying respects to the tribal chief. Cody said he was destined to beat Roman. Because when you get into wrestling, you ask yourself, what's your why? What's your purpose? Why are you here? Why are you doing this? What's your why? And he says, uh, I want to direct your attention. Again, there's no Tron, so whatever screens were above the ring, he directs everybody's attention above the ring, and they show a very brief uh, clip of his daughter, Liberty. I can't, you know, I can't even say that name now without that freaking commercial in my head. <laughs> All the commercials that we have on Raw, and every week they have that Liberty commercial. Liberty, 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 Liberty. That's all I think about. So they showed Liberty uh, on the screen. And obviously, you know, he's a cute little girl. And, and Liberty says uh, that she wants Daddy to finish the story. So it's a cute little video says, usually, this is a weird position for me to be in, because normally I'm the one in line, right? I'm going after the title. He says, now the line starts with me. So he looks dead into the camera, and he introduces himself to the audience. And he says, my name is Cody Rhodes. And he said, from undesirable to undeniable, and now undisputed WWE champion. So the Rocks music hits. And out walks the final boss with his Brahma bull belt over his shoulder. It's basically like his million dollar belt. All right, Ted DiBiase, he couldn't win the WWF title, so he had his own belt made. And that's what he walked around with. That's basically what this is for The Rock. The Rock has to have a belt. All right, if he's not going to have the belt, he'll have his own belt made. And I, I, I put it over the other night. I said it's a damn good looking belt. I think it looks better than Cody's belt. I really do. So he makes his way down to the ring. Fans chanted Undertaker at him. Don't encourage them, people, please. Somebody asked me, that there was a Super Chat question last night. Do I think we're going to get Rock against the Undertaker? I mean, come. Don't encourage them, please. Don't give them ideas. Don't give Undertaker any ideas. He's already struggling enough every day to stop himself from getting back in the ring. But Undertaker chokeslam Rock at WrestleMania. That's why they were chanting. So every time Rock would lift the microphone to his mouth, the people would boo. And they wouldn't let him speak. They chanted, shut the fuck up at him, which the USA Network uh, kept censoring. Finally, he said, the Rock is a lot of things, Philadelphia, but sucks isn't one of them. Nice little callback there to the old days. Smoking Skull Belt or the Brahma Bull Belt? I think I'm a Brahma Bull Belt guy, man. And the Smoking Skull Belt was pretty badass, but I really like this belt that he's walking around with. I'm going to be very tempted if they put that thing up for sale. So the fans chanted asshole at him. Then he got the what treatment, because of course it wouldn't be a WWE crowd without giving somebody the what treatment. He said this was also the largest record it was the uh, the record, rather, for the largest gathering of trailer park trash, and they drowned him in booze. He said, now you can chant shut the fuck up, you pieces of trash. Then he got serious. All the fun and games were over. Rock got a serious tone in his voice, and he gave Cody his flowers for beating Roman Reigns and winning the championship. He brought up the belt that he had made for Mama Rose. And how happy she was last night. And he said that Mama Rhodes should be very happy. So do you know who else had a big smile on his face? Your daddy in heaven. And the fans chanted Dusty's name. Rock said that Dusty was his hero. He was the American dream. And as you know, he says, Dusty and his dad, the soul man, Rocky Johnson, they ran up and down the roads together says, come to think of it, I don't know if my daddy is proud of me, all the things I did to you, but I don't care. said, Cody, you did it, and you finished that story. You took that belt. Just look at that belt. That brand new belt. Someone in the crowd called Rock's belt a fake belt. So he turned to them in the crowd. He said, it is most definitely not fake. 
He said it was given to him by the widow of Muhammad, uh, I almost said Muhammad Hassan, <laughs> Muhammad Ali. That's a different one. That's a different Muhammad altogether. Poor guy got, uh, poor guy got written off television. He was banned from UPN. Career ruined for Muhammad Hassan. So he said, no, it was, it was presented to him by the widow of Muhammad Ali at the Hall of Fame. He says it means as much to him as Cody's belt means to Cody. But he asked Cody, uh, would it be okay for me to hold your belt? And I'm looking at this, I'm going, what? This is, this is getting a little weird here. And the crowd chanted no, right? Because they don't trust this guy. <laughs> that would, yeah, that would be a very different belt. Yes, that would be a very different belt if it was uh, Muhammad Hassan's belt. So Rock said, look, I've held a lot of titles in my career, but that one, I've never held that one before. Is it okay if I, if I hold it? And Cody said, well, you want to hold this one? He goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, I'll let you hold this one if you let me hold yours. And I'm like, all right, now, now it's getting weird. Like, what, what is going on here? What exactly is going on here? And Rock said, sure, of course, I'd be honored for you to hold the People's Championship. So The Rock handed his belt to Cody, and Cody handed his belt to The Rock. Another fucking belt swap. Because the first one went so well, we had to do another one here. So they swapped belts. Rock took the WWE mustard belt. He put that over his shoulder. Cody had the Brahma Bull belt. And the fans started a this is awkward chant. Never a more appropriate chant have I heard than uh, this is awkward. Rock put the title on his shoulder, like I said. He said, it just kind of feels right. Thank you, Cody. And he handed the belt back to Cody. Rock said he's got to go away for a little while. And the fans booed. Rock says he knows. He knows. He goes, I don't want to leave either, but I love professional wrestling, he says. Then the fans started singing the na-na-na, hey-hey, goodbye song at him. Rock said, just remember, when The Rock comes back, whether Cody is the champion or not, he said, The Rock is coming back, and The Rock is coming back for him. Cody said he's looking forward to it. Rock said, uh, one more thing. He said, yesterday, at the biggest WrestleMania of all time, you beat Roman Reigns right in the middle of that ring, one, two, three. However, less than 24 hours before that, he said, The Rock beat you in the middle of the ring, one, two, three. So Cody Rhodes, your story with Roman Reigns is over, but our story, he took his glasses off, he said, our story has just begun. Cody said he believes that because Rock is the boss, right? You're the boss, right? The final boss. You're on the board. You're literally my boss, right? You're my actual boss. Which is not exactly the way it works, but let's just go with it. Cody said, well, I'm the champion. He's our champion. He's my champion. He's your champion. All the Roman fans who didn't want to see Cody win, guess what? He's your champion too. And he goes, boss, that also means that I'm your champion. So Rock agreed and said, there's one last thing before I ride off into the sunset. I've got something to give to you. And he said, no fireworks. He reached into his pocket. Now, I thought what he was going to do, he was going to pull his hand out of his pocket and he was going to go like that and give him the middle finger. That's, what, that's where I thought this was leading to. He puts his hand in his pocket, and he puts whatever I thought was in his hand in Cody's hand, right? But their, their hands are clasped, so we can't see if there's anything in his hand. Rock says, you don't even need to look in your hand to know what this is. He says, don't you ever break my heart again if you smell what the final boss is cooking. And they played Rock's music, and he left the ring. We were 45 minutes into the show. 45 minutes. With no commercials. 45 minutes into the show, all of this took. 
And when it was over, I felt like nothing really happened. <laughs> now, as far as what was in The Rock's hand, uh, I don't think there was actually anything in The Rock's hand. Because I, I, I was looking to see, and I thought, okay, Cody's going to open his palm, and we're going to see what's in his hand. There was nothing there. Like, when the camera eventually panned down, Cody had nothing in his hand. His hand was at his side. Um, I think what it was, it was simply the message that Rock was delivering to Cody. Which, again, he said, don't you dare break my heart again. Um, again, unless I miss something. I don't think that the point of this was that there was physically something in Rock's hand. And if there was, they never bothered to show us what it is, so I don't really give a shit. If it was important, they would have showed us, or they would have revisited it at some point. So what they did here in this segment is they confirmed what we already uh, suspected and uh, what I was talking about this weekend, which is that they're going to get one big match out of Rock before he eventually wrestles Roman Reigns. And we're going to get Rock against Cody. And of course, if it happens, it's going to be for the title. Cody is still going to be champion. I don't see Cody dropping the belt, at least until SummerSlam, and it may not even be until later on. You know, I don't need to see Cody have a Roman Reigns run with the belt. I, I just, Back-to-back -back reigns like that would be fucking boring. But by SummerSlam, I can't imagine Cody is still not the champion. You know, he's the one now. They say he's the face of this era. What this felt like when he came out at the beginning of the show is like other Raws after WrestleMania that we've seen in the past. Uh, you know, you all remember when Steve Austin came out after WrestleMania 14. He had the winged eagle. He gets into the ring. He takes his new belt. And you hear Jim Ross on commentary even the night before at WrestleMania. The Austin era has begun. So this is the Cody era now. This is the Cody Rhodes era. And if he's going to be the face of this era, then, you know, they have to have enough faith in him to uh, keep that title on him for a little while, at least. I can't imagine he's not the champion by the time The Rock comes back. Um, I assume the match is going to be SummerSlam. They did not give an indication of when Rock would be coming back. I, I can't imagine it's not going to be at SummerSlam. And once Rock started to get serious in this promo, you know, he got very deliberate and slow in the delivery of his lines. Like, he wanted to make sure everybody was paying attention to what he was saying. Uh, the belt swap part of this was awkward. I mean, I know what the point of it was. Rock wanted that shot of him with the belt. He wanted to send a message to Cody that this is going to be mine soon. I want this, what I want, I get, right? I'm the final boss. But just the execution of it was just very weird with the two of them swapping belts like that. Uh, Rock beat Cody at WrestleMania. He already got the win. He hit him with his move. Two moves, actually. The Rock bottom and the people's elbow. When they do the eventual match, Cody is going to beat The Rock. Roman Reigns may well factor into the finish, but Rock is not coming back and then pinning Cody Rhodes. Cody will beat The Rock. And then Rock and Roman will have something else in common. They will have both been beaten by Cody Rhodes. And they can go off and have their own issue, and that can lead into WrestleMania next year. That, that's how I see that playing out. Uh, in the meantime, since Rock is going away, and we're not getting it yet, what do you do with Cody Rhodes? Now, there still has not been any sort of uh, clarification about whether Cody is going to defend the title across both shows because it's the undisputed title. To me, Cody should be a SmackDown guy now that he won the title from Roman. We already have a World Heavyweight title on Raw. That was the whole purpose of that title in the first place. Because Roman never defended the belt on Monday nights. So they made a whole new belt. R Roman had the SmackDown version of it, basically. And the gold belt is the Raw belt. So I presume Cody is going to be on SmackDown going forward. And I'm standing by what I said as far as who I think the first challenger is going to be and who I think would make for an appropriate first challenger. I think it should be AJ Styles. And you can say, well, AJ lost to LA Knight at WrestleMania. What sense would that make? Well, we had a four-way match in the main event tonight to crown a number one contender for the World Heavyweight title. It would not be difficult for them to have a similar kind of match on SmackDown this Friday. You could have the exact same kind of match, Fatal 4-Way. And you can have AJ Styles as one of the participants. You can have LA Knight as one of the participants. You could have Randy Orton as one of the participants. And whoever else you want to flesh it out with. Maybe Kevin Owens. And in one match, you could have AJ win. Right? Something he hasn't done in a while. All he needs to do is win one match and become number one contender. 
you know, Jey Uso now is number one contender for the world heavyweight title. Jey Uso is not going to be the world heavyweight champion. Jey Uso should not be the world heavyweight champion. He is a body for Damian Priest to beat because everyone needs a first challenger. That's the role that Jey Uso now is in on Raw. There's nothing wrong with AJ Styles being in that same role on SmackDown. So Cody and AJ, I'm going to I'm going to stick to that. I'm going to stick to that. With with the draft pending, of course. We don't know how the rosters are going to shake out. Uh, but I still think that AJ, it's a very good chance he ends up being Cody's first program. We had Shinsuke Nakamura out. And I already knew who was going to win the match without even knowing who his opponent was. As soon as I saw Nakamura, I said the winner of this match is the other guy. Without even knowing who the other guy was. And then out came the NXT champion, Ilya Dragunov, making his main roster Monday Night Raw debut, hot off his win over Tony D'Angelo at Stand and Deliver on Saturday. Michael Cole confirmed that Dragunov will be part of the draft at the end of this month. Again, it starts on the 26th, and it will run into the 29th on Raw. Dragunov and Nakamura started off by uh, trading some shots. Nakamura, though, had the early advantage. Dragunov responded with a second rope splash followed by a series of German suplexes. He got Shinsuke with his Constantine special clothesline before ascending to the top. Dragunov tried for a top rope senton. Nakamura dodged it, and he trapped Dragunov in the corner, hit him with his sliding German suplex. Nakamura caught Dragunov with a knee strike, but he got hit with a kick to the head, and Dragunov flattened him with the H-bomb before finishing things off with the Torpedo Moscow. Your winner is the NXT champion, Ilya Dragunov, who is fantastic. And I am old enough to remember, Pepperidge Farm remembers, when Vince McMahon had Karrion Cross, at the time the reigning NXT champion, debut on Monday Night Raw in a match against Jeff Hardy and proceed to be beaten in less than 90 seconds as the NXT champion. It's nice to see the NXT champion. It's nice to see the NXT brand showed some respect here on this show, which I would expect nothing less from Triple H because NXT was his baby for so many years. If anybody is going to show respect for what Shawn Michaels is doing in NXT and for the history of NXT, it would be Triple H. So at least they debuted the NXT champion with a win and not a loss on the show tonight. That's a step in the right direction. Dragunov is a uh, special talent. If you're not familiar with him, if you don't watch much of NXT, uh, he's a special talent. He is gonna, he's one of the greatest sellers in all of wrestling right now. You know, he takes a beating and makes it look like he really is, just his body is racked with pain. Uh, he's a very good professional wrestler, I know. And he's going to make a great addition to either one of these rosters, whichever brand he lands on. Uh, this was not meant to be his official introduction. What this was was a tease. He's going to be in the draft. And I presume that he will end up on one of these two shows and that he will officially be on the main roster at that point. Uh, but that's what the purpose of this match was here. I, like, I don't expect to see him back on Raw next Monday night. Um, and also, just to show how unpredictable the draft can be, you know, NXT is going to be involved. So, ooh, you know, who knows who's going to land where. And I thought it was a fine introduction. Again, it was a relatively short match. Uh, now, I know there's going to be some very upset Shinsuke Nakamura fans. I heard the same thing from these people after the feud with Cody, which Nakamura lost, and every other feud that he has been in in the last two years, which he always loses. Whether it's Cody, whether it's Rollins, it doesn't matter. Right? He always loses. That's his role. His role is not to be the featured performer. His role is to be enhancement talent. Because he's very good, and he can go in there, and even if people don't actually believe he's going to win, it's somebody for the babyface to beat. And that's it. And he's obviously happy enough in the role, right? He's been doing it for so many years now. He keeps re-signing with them, so he must be happy. And that's it. It's not going to change. You're not going to get Shinsuke Nakamura with this big world heavyweight title run. It's not going to happen. 
And so he plays uh, a part, he plays a role on the show that they have a need for. There's no sense in continuing to complain about it. I understand that there's Nakamura fans who wish they would use him better, but get used to it. It's not changing. Now, as far as NXT, um, without knowing all of the names that are going to be eligible in the draft, Dragunov, obviously, I would expect to end up on one of these shows. The other name, if I had to throw one more out there, uh, would be Carmelo Hayes. I, there's no reason for Carmelo Hayes to be sticking around in NXT after the loss to Trick Williams' is stand and deliver. So I expect him to be on Raw or SmackDown coming out of the draft as well. We have the Judgment Day, Finn Balor, Dominic Mysterio, and J.D. McDonough all out in the ring. We're missing two people. Balor said to all the haters and doubters who thought Rhea Ripley could not beat Becky Lynch, and Damian Priest couldn't cash in his money in the bank successfully. He wanted them all to know that they were all wrong. And Dominic took the mic and was booed, and he introduced Rhea Ripley, who made her entrance. Rhea said, WrestleMania, it was almost perfect, but you know, we have a couple of new problems that we need to deal with. And she said two things uh, came out of the weekend. Ripley said that Mommy is always on top. And this is a new era for the Judgment Day. And out comes the new World Heavyweight Champion, Damian Priest, who has new music, which bodes well for him. Because if they're giving him the new music treatment, that means he's going to probably hold on to that belt for a while. So, good for him. Here comes Damian Priest. And, you know, I was very happy for Bailey. Coming out of WrestleMania night two. I'm really happy that she got her moment and she won that title. I'm also very happy for Damian Priest. The guy has put the work in. The guy has been one of the more featured stars on Raw. Because the Judgment Day has been all over the show for a year now. And, you know, he's he goes out there and he kills it. And he does a great job on, on promos and in his matches. And clearly they've been very high on him for a while. He got his moment at WrestleMania on Sunday. He's got new music now. Uh, there were some people I know even in our chat who were very happy because, you know, he's of Puerto Rican descent. And so now we have, for the first time in 50 years, for the first time since Pedro Morales, a Puerto Rican WWE champion. And to a lot of people, that's a big deal. So I'm very happy for him uh, that he's getting a shot here. And he did not cash in unsuccessfully after all these months of running around with that briefcase, which would have been a killer for him. Just, just ask Baron Corbin what happened. So once Priest was in the ring, the fans started a You Deserve It chant. He said, you're damn right I do. Now the Terror Twins stand before you, that's he and Rhea, as world champions. Priest said they rise to the occasion and now the world needs to follow suit and all rise for the Judgment Day. So Priest and Ripley, they held up their belts. What all of a sudden, right in the middle who sneaks in there, our truth with his Raw Tag Team title sneaks in. Now all three of them are holding their belts up. Priest turns and he sees Truth and he says, oh, hell no, we're not doing this again. What are you doing here? He goes, we're not doing this again. Truth said that he brought the Tag Team titles back to the Judgment Day, which was pretty funny. He said that he knows they're picky about who they let in the group, but he's only one half of the champions. So The Miz made his entrance. And he said that he doesn't want to be in the Judgment Day, and he knows that Truth does not want to be in the Judgment Day either. Priest said that Truth is not in the Judgment Day, and Truth said that he is in the Judgment Day. So Miz introduced himself and Truth as the new Raw Tag Team Champions. Balor said that they will have the shortest reign ever, and challenged them to put their titles on the line. Truth said that uh, that sounds like fun, but we can't, because there's only three of us. And Miz asked if he was talking about a real person, or are you talking about little Jimmy? And Truth said, no, he's, he's talking about a real person. And he said, we could have a six-man tag match, and it could be him and Miz teaming with the guy that you can't see. Pretty obvious where this was going. McDonough accepted the challenge on JD's behalf. Miz said he wanted to physically see who this partner was. And Truth was about to introduce this person, but he and Miz got attacked by the Judgment Day, thrown out of the ring. That took us into the commercial break. 
When Raw came back, we had a two-on-three handicap match. It was Miz and R-Truth against Finn Balor, Dominic Mysterio, and J.D. McDonough. Dom missed a splash in the corner that allowed Truth to tag in the Miz, who uh, teed off on Dominic. He held Dominic and McDonough for a double DDT in the middle of the ring. Miz tried for the skull-crushing finale, but Dom escaped. Balor hit Miz while the referee was distracted by Dominic. And they went to another commercial break with uh, Judgment Day taking Miz out to the floor. They come back. Miz is doing his best to get to the corner to make the tag. And he created some separation. He took out McDonough. Dominic, though, tripped up Truth to prevent the tag from happening. So as McDonough is posing in the ring, he's got a big smile on his face, and J.D. McDonough is posing. We hear the trumpets. And out walks John Cena. And he's got his never give up towel. And he runs down to the ring. He is the guy that we could not see. Cena hits McDonough with two shoulder tackles, slams him to the mat. Truth and Miz, they do the same to the other two me uh, members of the Judgment Day. The babyfaces did the You Can't See Me uh, bit, hit simultaneous five-knuckle shuffles, which I guess makes a 15-knuckle shuffle. And then they hit simultaneous attitude adjustments, and they scored a triple pit. So we got a, a fun little surprise cameo. You know, it was short and sweet. And it was actually a years-long payoff to this R-Truth story. Because for years now, Truth has said that, oh, John Cena, he's, I've been a big fan of his since I was a kid. Of course, Truth is older than Cena. But he's been the biggest John Cena fan. And, of course, he steals all the guy's moves every single time we see him in the ring. And so this was the big payoff, that John Cena finally showed up and teamed up with R-Truth. Uh, now, bear in mind, just because Cena won this match here does not mean that he is still not on a losing streak. The streak continues. The streak has to do with his singles record. Because he's won a bunch of tag matches, right? Tonight, he won a tag match with LA Knight a few months ago. He won one with Kevin Owens over a year ago. But he has not won a singles match in WWE since 2018. It's a long drought for a guy that people used to refer to as Super Cena. Guy can't win a match to save his life. And uh, Cena was on the Pat McAfee show earlier today, and he said he really he wants to come back. He's got his fingers crossed. He's hoping that come Christmas time, when he is done with all of his, uh, I guess, existing movies that he's going to be filming, he's hoping that. There's a period where he can turn and tell Hollywood, pump the brakes. I want to go back home to my, my WWE family and have one last run. He wants one final run. Not even a match. He used the word run. He wants one last run. So I wonder if the, the story for him is just going to be, can he win a match? Is that the story? Like, can John Cena finally win a match before his career ends? Is that the story? Because everybody in the crowd... It, the WWE world, where they were uh, filming the Pat McAfee show, started uh, chanting 17 at him. They were chanting 17, 17, because they want him to win the 17th world title. That makes for the more compelling story, if we're being honest. You know, you're, you're this close to uh, breaking Ric Flair's phony 16 world title record, even though he's actually won at least 21 titles. But we'll pretend that didn't happen. Uh, that's the more compelling story. But we'll see. He, he's hoping. He's hoping by Christmas time, which I guess would lead into WrestleMania 41, he can get a proper run, and then that's it. He's going to call it quits. Because he's drawn a line in the sand in, in recent interviews and said that he wants to retire when he turns 50. Now he's saying it might actually be earlier than that. If he can get that one last run, that may be it. We'll see. Again, this is not the same John Cena that we used to see 10 years ago in the ring. Uh, he, he's fallen off quite a bit. You know, he, he doesn't, he just doesn't move around in quite the same way. He doesn't do as much as he used to do. Uh, he's older, you know, he's older and he's doing other things and this is not his full-time job anymore. And, you know, look, it happens as you get older, it happens. There's certain things you used to be able to do that you can't do anymore. That's what John Cena is facing right now. Do I want to see him be the world champion again? Do I, do I have this 
dying, you know, undying urge to see him hold the world title one last time. I personally don't, but it makes for the more compelling story. Now, the announcers recap the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal from SmackDown last Friday, which was won by Bronson Reed. And then they cut to the backstage area where Reed was cutting a promo. And he boasted that he was going to win tonight in the main event. He was in that fatal four-way number one contenders match. And he said that he was going to beat the other three men in that match, which were uh, Drew McIntyre, Jey Uso, and Ricochet. And he was going to show all three of them what raw dominance looks like. The bigger story here, potentially, may have been the glitch that was shown during the promo. Now, it was very brief. It was a fleeting moment. But there was a very noticeable glitch, and I didn't catch it, but apparently there may have been a message as well. So not only did the screen glitch, but there may have been some text that I didn't see. But I did see the glitch. So I wonder, you know, could this, could this be the beginning of some sort of viral uh, stuff they're going to be doing for the return of Uncle Howdy? We saw Uncle Howdy at the end of the Bray Wyatt documentary make a very brief appearance. They stuck that little Easter egg in there at the very end. Uh, he's going to be, Bo Dallas is going to be continuing that character. So is this tied into him? Is this tied into Alexa Bliss? You know, in her return, maybe it's both of them. If we start seeing more glitches in these segments, then we'll know that it was intentional. But I assume there was a reason for that. Now, in the back, Rhea Ripley is shown talking to Dominic, who, uh, did not actually think that John Cena was going to show up. He was, he was licking his wounds after the loss that the uh, Judgment Day took. Rhea says that, look, John Cena is not our problem. She says Andrade is. And told Dom that Andrade betrayed him and go figure that shit out, basically, is the message to Dom. And Dom went off to go figure that shit out. Rhea is standing there, and all of a sudden, from off camera, she gets hit in the head with a flying chair, right in the back of the head. And then the camera pans over and we see Liv Morgan, who threw a chair at Rhea's head. And there's an attack that continues until it gets broken up. Dom comes back to make the save for Rhea. Liv is a crazy person. What did I tell you? I told you, Liv Morgan, going to be the first challenger for Rhea Ripley coming out of WrestleMania. That's exactly what happened here. They've already set up the match for Backlash. Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan. And actually, Backlash is an appropriate name if you consider the history between these two. And that Liv missed all those months. They credited Rhea by injuring her in storyline. And she still really hasn't gotten her revenge for that. So Backlash kind of makes sense. But again, Liv is just somebody that Rhea can work with and can beat until she moves on to her next serious challenger. And Liv Morgan fans are not going to want to hear that. I have nothing against Liv Morgan. But she's not beating Rhea Ripley. She's not the priority here. She will wrestle Rhea. She will get beat. Rhea will move on. And so will you. Because that's the way it is. Rhea Ripley ain't losing to Liv Morgan. At the end of this, as Dom is on the floor tending to Rhea, he looks up at the cameraman and goes, get out of here, and he pushes the camera. And we stick with one continuous camera shot down the hallway, into the arena, down to the ringside area. Love seeing it. Love seeing these production changes here on these shows. In the ring was Indy Hartwell, and we were waiting to find out who her opponent was going to be. Turns out that her opponent was the NXT Women's Champion. The new NXT Women's Champion. She beat Lyra Valkyria for the belt at Stand and Deliver this weekend. Roxanne Perez, who comes out and makes her Raw debut. Michael Cole talked about the history that Perez and Hartwell had in NXT, which started with Indy winning the NXT Women's title that Roxanne had to vacate last year. So there's a little bit of history there. Uh, Roxanne slapped Indy to kick things off and then pounced on her with a headlock. Hartwell threw her down to break that up. I mean, the size differential between these two is, is comical. Perez regained the advantage, hit a drop kick and a Russian leg sweep. Indy came back and tried for a big boot, but Candice LeRae pulled at Roxanne's legs from outside because Candice was in Indy's corner. 
And this annoyed Indy Hartwell because Indy Hartwell, she's straight laced. She hasn't subscribed to these new heel tactics that her good friend over here, Candace, has been employing, right? She wants to do things the right way. So she wasn't looking for any help here. As the referee went over to admonish Candace, Roxanne took advantage with an eye rake and then followed that with her pop rocks finish and she picked up the win. This was not long enough to mean really much as a match, but again, the real purpose that this served here was to promote the draft. Anything can happen. The NXT Women's Champion can very well be drafted with her belt to Monday Night Raw or to Friday Night SmackDown. And I, I guess that she'll also be in the draft as uh, Dragunov will be. And it also further established Candice's new heel character, Indy's reluctance to go along with it. You know what? I know this, this program here, the storyline, is not exactly lighting the world on fire. But this is the sort of thing that I've asked for in the past, and a lot of people have asked for. So I don't know, you know why they would complain about it, uh, the fact that they're doing it. I mean, you don't have to like it. But what I appreciate is the fact that we are getting storylines with the women that don't revolve around the women's title, which is something that for so long, and this was a problem in AEW as well, the focus would be on, okay, who is the women's champion? Who are they feuding with? And everybody else was just kind of there. There were really no major stories. you got to have stories to try to get these characters over. They're not all going to revolve around the world championship. So Candice and Indy have their own little story going on here. And again, it's not terribly exciting, but you know, Candice is going to be a heel going forward. Indy is resisting that. Eventually, they're going to have a match, right? We can see where this is going. Uh, unfortunately, neither one of them are over a lick right now. They go out there, they get negative reaction. I'm hoping that in due time, if they're featured a little bit more, uh, that they'll get a better reaction. Some people get over, some people don't. But at least they're they're focusing on women who are not based around the world championship. It's not just Rhea Ripley, you know, and Becky Lynch, and it's not just Bailey and Oscar. So that I like, but not not the uh, the most exciting story, I will say. So we had the new Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn, the man to beat Gunther, six hundred and sixty six days as the IC champion. Down the drain, because Sami Zayn took him down at WrestleMania. He was out to the ring next to address his public. He said he wanted to do something historic, right? That's what he was telling us in the lead-up to WrestleMania this year. I want to do something historic. And I did just that. I beat Gunther, and I ended his reign. And he said, really, though, it was Gunther. He was the one who made history. He was the one who held the title for all those days. And guess what? I beat him. So Zayn said he got a lot of help from the fans. Said there were times where he didn't have any confidence in himself, and it was the fans who really uplifted him and made him believe in himself. He said seeing his wife and son before the match helped motivate him. Seeing Kevin Owens in the back that night motivated him. He said there was one other guy who helped him out, and it looked like he was about to introduce Chad Gable, but he got interrupted by Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. There's no Gunther on the show tonight. The champions who lost, by the way, Roman Reigns, Gunther, Seth Rollins. I wouldn't have expected Roman tonight anyway, but there was no Seth Rollins on Raw, and there was no Gunther. I'm still wondering if Seth actually got hurt at WrestleMania. I have not heard one way or the other, uh, but he he was not looking good. Just just the look in his eyes. He uh, He did not look right at the end of that show last night. Nor did he stick around. They, he limped his way to the back. Kevin Owens helped him to the back. But Sammy, uh, again, was interrupted by Imperium. Kaiser has talked about how Gunther put in a lot of hard work and dedication to make that Intercontinental title the most prestigious in all of WWE, and it breaks his heart to see somebody like Sammy holding that title now. Kaiser said that Zayn looks like all these peasants in Philadelphia. He called him a bum. Kaiser said that he and Vinci were there to make things right. When have they ever made things right? I mean, we, we got to see a more serious side of them, at least during the, the New Day feud. But for the most part, these guys have been a joke on the main roster. When have they ever set things right? They said they're going to set things right. They climbed up onto the apron on either side. 
And Chad Gable ran out. He joined Sammy in the ring. That caused Kaiser and Vinci to flee back to the floor. And Gable did his shoosh and thank you. And they took us to commercial. Now, before we came back for the inevitable tag team match, because you had to know this uh, tag team match was coming, we got a vignette for a returning star. Sheamus is on his way back. How about that? We have not heard about Sheamus in many months. Other than the fact that there have been a lot of reports about his contract status and that his contract was either up or about to expire very soon. And I was really genuinely starting to think that he was heading somewhere else because he's been healed up from his, his injuries for a while now. And they completely left him out of the WrestleMania build. And I'm starting to think, okay, well, maybe, maybe he's going somewhere else. But no, he is coming back. I, I presume that means he's re-signed. But he is on his way back. Uh, it was just a very basic vignette. Uh, there was no date attached to it or anything like that. So we don't know when. They may run this for a few weeks before he comes back. My guess is that we won't see him until after the draft. They're starting to tease it now. He'll probably show up one of those two draft nights, and we'll find out what brand he'll be on at that point. And for his sake, I hope he ends up on, on Raw. Because Sheamus only has one story left to be told. Which is, and I know he's never been Universal Champion before, I don't believe. But nobody gives a fuck about that. He has never been the Intercontinental Champion. So where the IC title goes, so too should Sheamus. So that's where I'm hoping he lands. And then maybe next year at WrestleMania, he'll finish his story. Right? Cody finished his. Why can't Sheamus finish his own story? So we come uh, back live, and it was Gable and Zayn teaming up to take on Imperium. With Zayn in the heel corner, Vinci tagged in and tried his best to stop Sammy's momentum, but to no avail, Sammy fought back. And Gable tagged into the match, hit a flying splash on Vinci, and Kaiser out on the floor. Back inside, Gable connected with a flying crossbody on Vinci. While Imperium was working over Sammy, the crowd chanted, We want beach balls. Raw went to commercial. It came back. Gable was fighting off Kaiser and Vinci in the ring. He had Vinci isolated and hit a flying headbutt for a near fall. And they got this cool overhead shot. Like on the actual headbutt, not even on, like on the replay. And from overhead, you see Gable uh, flying across the ring. The only drawback of it is that uh, he clearly didn't connect on it. So you might want to reconsider that shot going forward for the diving headbutt it actually looks it looks better when you don't shoot it from overhead then you give away the trick can't do that he went back up top for a moonsault vinci avoided it uh gable tried to go for the chaos theory kaiser tagged in they hit the imperial bomb but zane broke it up the uh pin gable and zane hit a series of stereo german suplexes on kaiser and vinci sammy tagged himself back into the match and at the request of Gable, who was still coaching him from the apron, Sammy applied an ankle lock. And he had the submission applied on Vinci. Kaiser took out Gable on the apron, and then he broke up the ankle lock. At this point, things broke down with all four men. Boiled down, though, to Vinci and Sammy. Vinci got crushed by an exploder suplex. And Sammy was about to finish it off with the haluva kick, but he reaches over and he tags Gable into the match. Then he follows through, and he hits the Haluva kick. And Gable follows that with the Chaos Theory stalling German, takes him over, and Chad Gable picks up the win for his team. So a fun little tag team match here. Uh, I thought that this was a, uh, you know, a fine showing for the two of them, working together as a team for the first time. Now later on in the back, because we had more from these two, Sami Zayn is walking by, and he bumps into uh, Alpha Academy. They're celebrating with Gable, right, for Gable's big win. And Sami says, guys, um, if I could have a moment here with Chad. So Otis and Maxine and Tozawa, they walk off. And Zayn says that, look, I, I know what you want. I know you wanted a favor from me. And he says, now we're even. And Gable says, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what do you mean now we're even? And Sammy says, well, I tagged you into the match. I knew you would want to pick up the win. And so 
I tagged you in, and now we're even. And I was about to say, this guy's out of his fucking mind. Is Sam, Sammy must be going heel. Because if he's putting that shit on Chad Gable, if Chad turns around and smacks the taste out of his mouth, it'll be the biggest babyface move he could do. And Sammy says, no, nah, I'm, I'm just kidding. He says, Hi, I'm, I, I'm only playing with you. He goes, no, I know what you want. He says, and he holds up the Intercontinental title. And Sammy said, it would be an honor for me to defend this title against you on Raw next week in my hometown of Montreal. And Gable was pumped. He had a serious look on his face, and they shook hands. And so they made it official. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. This is what I was hoping for coming out of WrestleMania. Give me a months-long program with Sami Zayn and Chad Gable. Even if they trade the title back and forth. Zayn and Gable is what I'm here for. We didn't get Gable and Gunther, the payoff of WrestleMania. That sucks. But it's over now. It's over and done with. Here's a new story for Sami Zayn and Chad Gable to really light up Raw with next week. They're going to be in Montreal. So you're going to have a, a wild Canadian crowd at Sami's hometown. Obviously, he's going to be over like gangbusters. And... The question is, how are they going to work this now? Because we've seen Gable fail in multiple opportunities that he had with Gunther for the Intercontinental title. Does he lose again? I say yes. I believe we are heading for a Chad Gable loss next week, and I think that that loss is going to be what sets him off. And we're going to get heel Gable coming out of that match next week. Whether it's on that show or the following week, I think Sammy wins the first match, and... Goes in for the handshake, right? Being a good sport. Could be the Bob Backlund thing, right? Go in and then Chad just snaps and beats the hell out of him. And then they kind of go from there. Now, I could also see Gable cheating to win the championship. That's a possibility too. But I'm going to go with option A. That's how I see things playing out. So I'm already very much looking forward to that match next week. In the back, Andrade was shown shaking hands with the Raw GM Adam Pearce, the NXT GM Ava, and the SmackDown GM Nick Aldis. Andrade then left the room, and the general managers continued their discussion. They were talking about the upcoming draft when Chelsea Green walked into the room, and she was very upset that she was left off the WrestleMania card this year. She wants a match. She wants an opponent. Did you get my, uh, my messages, my emails? And Pierce says, uh, I did, and he revealed that uh, Chelsea is actually going to have a special match tonight. We have an opponent for you. And she was all excited, and Chelsea walked off, and then Pierce and Aldis just looked at each other and laughed. And so poor Chelsea Green, poor unwitting Chelsea Green, made her way out to the ring for her mystery opponent, who was she going to be in the ring with? That woman turned out to be Jade Cargill. And Jade came out. Chelsea was not happy about this. She was mouthing off to the announcers about she didn't want this match. The bell rang, and she turned around right into a big boot by Jade. Jade didn't catch her in the face so much as she caught her in like the chest or the shoulder. And she immediately picked up Chelsea. She got her up for the jaded, dropped her face first. One, two, three. That's all she wrote, folks. That's Jade Cargill making short work of Chelsea Green. 30-second squash win for Jade, who looks fantastic in, in short spurts like this. But I'm waiting to see what the new and improved Jade Cargill looks like after five or six months now it's been of on-the-job training in NXT. She's been down there at the Performance Center, I think a, a day or two each week, whatever it is, uh, training, learning from the best, right? Okay, well, I'm very curious what she can do when they put her in the ring with somebody for 10 minutes and it's one-on-one. -on -one. That's what I'd like to see. We still have yet to see that. She has the quick squash here. She was uh, in a tag team match at WrestleMania, so all she had to do was make the hot tag, come in and do some power spots. So I, I want to see what she has learned and what she has picked up on over these last several months. Uh, hopefully soon we'll have the chance to see that, but that's not what this was. This was, let's just put her out there, 
Let's have her beat somebody quick and easy and just keep doing this. But they do it Ryback, right? They had Ryback come out on TV every week and beat jobbers. Then it was two on one. Then it was three on one. How long did that go on for? Until he finally got over. And he was legitimately over. I know now he's out of his fucking mind. But there was a point in time, believe it or not, where Ryback looked like, okay, this guy's going to be the next big thing. And then Mark Henry fell on him at WrestleMania and crushed his hopes and dreams. And that was the end of Ryback. See, I look back on that. I look back on that match at WrestleMania 39 sometimes. And I wonder, when Mark Henry fell, I should have asked Mark Henry when I interviewed him about this. When Mark Henry fell on top of Ryback, I wonder if he scrambled his brains. And maybe that's why Ryback is the way that he is. I don't know. I know he's not been the same since. Hopefully that doesn't happen to Jade. Hopefully she they don't put her in the ring with uh, Nia Jax and then picks her up and Nia falls on her and then her career is never the same. Oh, Hopefully uh, history will not repeat itself. Drew McIntyre was out to the ring first. We're already at the end of the show, believe it or not. Drew McIntyre, he was <laughs> wasted any time. Drew McIntyre was marching down to the ring for his entrance for the main event. This was the four-way match to crown a number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship currently occupied by one Damian Priest, the old Punishment Martinez, is world champion. And he demanded a microphone. So they give McIntyre the mic. He said what happened the night before was BS. He said his title reign lasted five minutes and 46 seconds. He said that's five minutes longer than most of the fans last in bed. He said he might not like Seth Rollins, but he respects him. And he said that he and Rollins shared a moment at the end of their match that only Warriors know about. Then he said that that bondage undertaker, Damian Priest, screwed it all up. He said he would say that he would whip Priest's ass, but he would probably just enjoy it. McIntyre said that the Money in the Bank briefcase is a joke, and it has now cost him on two separate occasions. He said that he's coming for Priest, and he labeled him nothing more than a transitional champion. And he was freaking out as he was cutting this promo. Like, he's all over the place, and then he's looking down at the camera. You're going to be a transitional champion. That belt is coming back to me. He said Priest may have had the contract, but he didn't. Uh, cause what happened. He wasn't the cause of it. He said the cause of it, for that, he blamed that prick, CM Punk. McIntyre remembered saying that he would win the title, he would have a moment with his family, and then he would rub it in Punk's face. He said that's exactly what he did. He called Punk a coward for sweeping his legs out from under him the moment he took his eye off of him, and then hitting him with his brace. McIntyre said that he knew Punk would go into hiding, but He's going after his weakest part. And McIntyre said it just so happens that Punk's whole body is his weakest part. So Jay Uso's theme interrupted uh, McIntyre. And then Uso made his entrance for the main event. Pat McAfee, whenever Jay Uso comes out, stands up on, on his chair. And he does the Jay Uso uh, the bob up and down. right? He does the Jay Uso dance. And Michael Cole on commentary is trying to tell Pat, like, stop like because McIntyre is seeing it right and Michael Cole sounds like he's got he had the fear of God put into him right he could see this is going to end very badly for Pat if he doesn't sit down and Pat keeps dancing so McIntyre apparently took his microphone and threw it at McAfee and finally he stopped but McIntyre came out here man and he was pissed off and I loved it I loved every second of this because why wouldn't he be this man has been obsessed with Rollins and the world heavyweight title and mocking Punk, and this was going to be his big moment. And he went to WrestleMania, and he got his moment, and he took, you know, he handed the belt to his wife for a brief second, and then he shoved it in Punk's face, and then Punk took it all away from him. Punk robbed him of what should have been one of the best nights of his career. I would not expect anything other than Drew McIntyre to come out here and be angry and not come out here and just... Looked like he would any other week. So he comes out, he looked unhinged, he was crazed. Again, he's, he's doing exactly what he should be doing here. And it was very entertaining. 
I mean, it's very entertaining to watch him having a meltdown out there. But uh, the the anger I thought was uh, pitch perfect. So it was McIntyre, it was Uso, it was Ricochet, and it was Bronson Reed. The match started with McIntyre and Jay going at it. With Reed, Uso, and McIntyre outside, Ricochet took all of them out with a big uh, dive off the top rope. And then they went right to a commercial break here, not 90 seconds into this main event. We go to our first commercial. When they came back, everybody was back inside. There was a table set up in the corner. Jay sent McIntyre outside. Reed flattened him with a running elbow drop. Reed then ran at Jay in the corner with a hip charge, and he was eyeing that table. And he tried to powerbomb Jay, but he fought out of it. Jay went for a spear, got blocked by Bronson, and then Jay got sent crashing through the table in the corner with uh, what I believe is a power slam. Right through the table. And then it was right back to another ad break. So we go right back to commercial. They butchered this match with all of these ad breaks. They really did. I mean, it's one thing to go to a break and come back, to do it two or three different times, almost one right after the other. It just, it takes you out of the match. So eventually they come back. Ricochet got caught by McIntyre, thrown across the ring. Reed responded with a beal to Ricochet. A uh, $100 beal. Now he, uh, he, I'm sorry. He beeled him across the ring, and then he stared down McIntyre. So we got the two big guys in this match. We have McIntyre, Reed, face-to-face. They exchanged hard chops. McIntyre was able to lift Bronson Reed and drop him with a Michinoku driver. Jey Uso interrupted the pin attempt, though, when McIntyre went for the winning fall. Now all four men were inside with Ricochet and Jay hitting a super kick on Drew before being joined by Bronson Reed for a triple super kick. After a brief exchange between Ricochet and Jay, uh, which ended with Reed clotheslining Ricochet and then getting uh, hit by an Uso spear, we had McIntyre stopping the count after he uh, went for the pin. All four men were down. McIntyre went for a superplex. Jay blocked it. And Jay headbutted McIntyre, who got crotched, and then he fell backwards into a tree of woe position. So Ricochet ran the ropes, and he ate a headbutt from Jay, so he got knocked off. But then Jay got suplexed off the ropes when McIntyre pulled himself up. He grabbed him, and he threw him across the ring. So Reed power slams Ricochet, gets a near fall. He follows that up with a senton. Reed goes up top. He's going for the tsunami. But McIntyre cuts him off, and Reed sends Drew to the floor, and then he hits him with a shoulder block from the apron. Bronson Reed then goes, and he clears off the announce desk, and he ends up uh, laid out on top of it. So now Bronson Reed is the one who's laying on top of the announce desk. Ricochet is in the ring, and he has a look on his face like he is thinking of doing something very dumb. And he did. He proceeds to nail a 450 splash from the top rope, but he had a ways to go as far as distance. 450 splash from the top rope, nailed it, put Bronson Reed through the announce desk, and in the the process, he's lucky he didn't break all of his ribs, although he was selling it like he did. So that takes out Ricochet. He took himself out. Takes out Ricochet, takes out Bronson Reed. Now we're down to two. McIntyre and Jay are in the ring. McIntyre puts him down with a Future Shock DDT. McIntyre goes to the corner. He begins to count down for the Claymore when who should appear but a wild CM Punk who grabs Drew by the foot. Drew turns around and he sees this fucker outside the ring and he's screaming at him, prick! He's calling him a prick. He can't believe this. Well, Jay Uso takes advantage of the distraction. And he hits McIntyre in the head with a kick. Jay spears him, goes up top, hits an Uso splash, gets the pin. And just like that, Jay Uso is now the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. And as I said before, that would explain why they felt he had to beat Jimmy at WrestleMania Night 1. So they abruptly went off the air. After one final shot of CM Punk smiling outside the ring, he was very proud of himself. 
And they very quickly, uh, clearly they were rushing to get that in. And they went off the air not long after that. Uh, it was a good main event. It was ruined by too many ad breaks. Again, it just, it, it takes me out of it when they have those commercial free first hours. And then there's just so many at the back end. And unfortunately, it affected this match uh, enough that I just didn't enjoy it quite as much because I feel like I missed a good chunk of it. But Jey Uso now is the number one contender, which is fine. Jey Uso is over enough where he's believable in that spot. He's not going to beat Damian Priest, but it's someone for Damian Priest to work with, someone who's over, a big baby face on the roster. He can beat him. Uh, so we're going to get that match soon. CM Punk once again screws over Drew McIntyre for the second night in a row. Punk, interestingly, did not have the brace on his arm. Now, I know he took it off last night, and he used it as a weapon. Uh, it was not back on his arm tonight. He had nothing. There was no brace or cast or apparatus of any kind uh, on his arm. And it makes me wonder if he might uh, potentially be medically cleared in time for Clash at the Castle. Clash at the Castle is June 15th. And they're coming to Scotland. They're, coming, they're going to be in Glasgow. It would be the perfect place to do that first match. I say first because I'm sure we're going to have more than one uh, between Punk and McIntyre. In fact, if Punk could be cleared in time for Clash at the Castle, you could do Punk and McIntyre with McIntyre winning. And then you could run it back at SummerSlam. And you could have Punk uh, get his win back. But a lot of that is predicated on how quickly Punk can heal. You know, he tore his triceps, and usually that's six to nine months. It's somewhere in that range. Um, you know, five months for a torn triceps. Now, he did tell Ariel Helwani that the difference in this injury, the one he had in AEW when he tore his uh, triceps, night and day. Because uh, now he's getting, you know, proper care for it, and I don't know if he's rehabbing it any differently. But he made it sound like his progress is coming along very well, and he, he would love to get back in the ring right now, but he's going to listen to the doctors. But if he can come back early, then that's your Clash at the Castle match right there. You know, in Drew's, in Drew's homeland. Think of what the crowd reaction would be to that. CM Punk, the de facto heel, walking out there against Drew McIntyre. Uh, I would love it if he could be uh, cleared in time for that show, but... Uh, that really just boils down to how fragile he is, I suppose, and uh, how quickly he can come back from that injury. Again, he is coming off three significant, not even just three injuries, three significant injuries in a two-year time span. So can he stay healthy? That's going to be the question that's going to follow him for the rest of his run in WWE. I said this a few weeks ago. It's not even a question anymore of can he... Can he stay out of trouble? Can he not, you know, be involved in any kind of drama? It, I don't think that's even the question anymore. The question now is, can he not get hurt? Can his body not betray him? Can he get through a match or a series of matches and not get hurt? Because there's a lot of, you know, big matches for him to be a part of. There's money to be made with big CM Punk matches in WWE against multiple people. You know, but it's hard to rely on him if he is going to continue getting hurt. Now, this was just one injury. But that'll be the thing that I'm looking for when he comes back. Can he stay healthy? Overall, uh, I thought it ended up as a good show. Um, not as exciting as I was kind of hoping it would be. It was a bit of a letdown in that regard. Um, we got the, the setup for Rock and Cody. We don't know when, probably SummerSlam, but that was the key thing. And they opened the show with that. And there was really nothing else for the rest of the show that sort of, you know, rose to that level. Uh, I thought the main event was good. Again, we crowned the new number one contender. Gable and Zayn, their story is going to continue. The draft is coming up. We had a couple of NXT faces on the show tonight. Cena made a very quick cameo, so there were different things that happened, but just that excitement level just wasn't there in the way that I was hoping it would be. But it was much better than last year's show, so at least we're heading in the right direction. Uh, that show last year was an absolute abomination, so it was better than, than that for sure. Now next Monday, Andrade goes one-on-one -on -one with Dominic Mysterio. 
And the big match they announced is for the Intercontinental title. Sami Zayn in his hometown of Montreal will defend the championship against Chad Gable. That is the match that I am looking forward to. Very much so. Here is the Twitter poll. 62, roughly 62% of you have given this Raw a thumbs up. 26.7% thumbs down and 11.5% thumbs uh, down. I'm sorry, 26% thumbs in the middle and 11 and a half thumbs down. So that's with about 2,000 votes in. Not quite WrestleMania night two this year, but it was never going to be. But go ahead and vote at Solomonster. What did you think of the Raw After Mania 2024? All righty. Let's take a look here at your uh, Super Chats. Yeah, and I know people, some people were mentioning to me Tama Tonga or Jacob Batu. And, you know, how come they weren't on the show? Because there was no... You know, bloodline on the show. There was no Roman Reigns. There was no Solo Sokoa. There was no Jimmy Uso or Paul Heyman. They're going to save that for SmackDown on Friday. I don't know if Rock will be on the show and then he'll go away or if The Rock is now officially gone. There's got to be some follow-up with Roman. Roman can't just vanish. There's got to be something with him. Triple H was teasing. I don't remember what interview it was, but Triple H was teasing like there's some major story coming with Roman Reigns, some you know big direction they've got for him or for the bloodline, so if they're going to do anything, that would be on SmackDown uh, on Friday. By the power of Valhalla, it's Vintage Coltar. It's Coltar with the antlers. Hey, Yuki O'Rules dropping a $51 Coltar super chat. Just thanks for all the great work that you do. Yukio Rules, thank you very much. How ridiculous does he look with those fucking antlers on his head, by the way? <laughs> hey, Yukio, thank you for the 51, man. I appreciate that. Appreciate that very much. Uh, let's go back to the early uh, Super Chats here that came in before I began streaming. And uh, we'll kick kick things off here with the early ones first and uh, then we'll go through the, some of the ones that you see over here we'll pick up with that here in a second but let's begin with Vorpal Vorpal Bender dropped a five dollar super chat Solomaster thanks for the Wrestlemania coverage that you've been providing here's to a new era of WWE pro wrestling at its finest I'm just glad that they're finally calling it that again it's the little things, you know? Brother Fluff Salisbury, solo. I've only got three words. She said yes. That's amazing. That is amazing. Which credit card is she sending you in the mail? That's great news. I'm glad you got approved. Fantastic news. Everybody celebrate with Brother Fluff Salisbury. Or that means you're engaged. He didn't really specify. But if you are engaged, congratulations. I'm very happy for you. Everybody in the chat is very, very happy for you. That's great news. Dick the Cock Johnson. I genuinely cannot stand Triple H and his ego tripping. Well, get used to it. There's going to be a lot more of it, I think. Prince Vegeta says, hot take, this Rock run is better than his 2011 to 2013 run. Is Cody Rock the SummerSlam main event? Uh, yes, I believe it is. I don't think that's much of a hot take at all, actually, because I think that uh, Heel Rock, to me anyway, is always going to be more superior to any of the babyface runs that he has had since he went part-time many years ago. I mean, when he was a babyface in uh, 98 for a period there, or... Uh, in 99, in 2000, you know, Rock was great. You know, Rock and Triple H, they carried that company on their backs in 2000. And you know, Rock was a babyface that year. But Heel Rock, I'll take Heel Rock over the uh, 2011 to 2013 Rock. Donny Yasu, that botch looked nasty. I hope Ricochet is okay. See, I didn't really look at it as too much of a botch. I know he caught more of the 
uh, edge of the table, but he did he did hit Reed and he did break the table. So I didn't really look at it as a botch. I mean, maybe he undershot him a little bit, but you know, he still got the same intended effect there. So I wouldn't necessarily call it a botch. Uh, and we've got this journey called Life. Night two of WrestleMania was so fun. What was your favorite part? Uh, the main event. All the insanity of the main event. Cody, you know, pinning Roman, ending that run. Uh, all of it. All of it. A five-star main event. That's how it is. It's like the people who, who, uh, when I made the comment once that Rock Hogan at WrestleMania 18 was a five-star match. There are, I, I would say most people probably agreed with me, but there were people who were like, how is that five stars? If you mute the crowd, it's a, you know, two-star match at best. Yeah, you can't, you can't mute the crowd, dude. The crowd is part of it. Well, if you take this away and you take that away, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Let's just take away all the good parts of the match and then it'll be a two-star match. That's a five-star fucking match, Rock Hogan. At WrestleMania 18. So was this one last night. Uh, it's Fallout. I never thought wrestling would ever make me cry, but wow, what an emotional video package for Cody. I still think it should happen last year, but I think it made for a better moment this year. Well, as long as we got the payoff in the end that we were supposed to get, that's all I care about. We got the right payoff for the story. That's the most important thing. Uh, Jacqueline Fowler with the $25 Super Chat. A Neon Dream. I appreciate you as well. Thank you for being here. Jacqueline says, Hey Solo, what if LA Knight wins money in the bank and he brings back the Mr. Kennedy countdown to WrestleMania? Only it would be the LA countdown. It would be different than the same tired cash-ins and in the meantime he could still win the US title. No, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. We just had somebody cash in at WrestleMania. I don't think we need back-to-back -back WrestleMania cash-ins. I really don't think we need that. I think you just focus on him and Logan Paul and getting there. And getting to that US title feud. Just focus on that. I don't even think he needs the briefcase. Uh, Barry MK with the $5 Super Chat. Thank you, Barry. What Rock gave to Cody was a warning, a very helpful one that you should think about also. It was, don't play 2K24 on PC. If only somebody had told me. Yeah, no, there was uh, there was nothing in Rock's hand. Rock, Rock was delivering a message to Cody. It's just the way they went about doing things with that and the belt swap, like it was just very awkward. Alex says, Brother Solo, with the next two pay-per-views taking place in France and Scotland, respectively, what are your plans in terms of the reviews due to the start time? I don't know what the time zones are. I haven't even checked what the time zones are. So I can't answer that question unless I know exactly what time it's airing. Uh, the Saudi shows are never a problem because usually they start at 12 or 1, and then I could be live by 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Uh, unfortunately, this next Saudi show at the end of May, which is King of the Ring, King and Queen of the Ring, um, and I certainly hope they don't do Rock and Cody on that show, because I'm not going to be here for that show. Boy, that would suck. But yeah, that's actually coming before the Scotland pay-per-view. There's a, there's a Saudi show on May 25th, so you've got France. Hey, think about this, okay? You, you want to see how things have changed in WWE. As far as all of these international shows that we've been getting over the last few years, the next three pay-per-views in WWE are in France, Saudi Arabia, and Scotland. So, yeah. They're, they're definitely running more international shows. Then SummerSlam is in uh, Cleveland this year. Backlash starts at 1. That's perfect. That's perfect. So if, if Backlash is starting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, then I'll be live by 4. It's perfect. Jerome Eugenio, I see Jade PC training going well. I don't know. We haven't had the chance to see yet, but obviously 
they're not uh, giving her too much. I wouldn't read too much into it yet, though, because, again, they just debuted her. They might want her to rack up some squashes. Before long, though, they're going to have to put her in a longer match. And then we'll get a better sense of what she's learned and if they uh, broke her down to build her back up, as they sometimes do with people. Very curious how she looks in a longer match, if she has improved at all. Justin G, rolling the super chat dice for Uncle Saudi. Well, I, ho I hope you got Uncle Saudi. I didn't see what popped up for yours. Uncle Saudi is one of the randos, so it's not assigned to any particular dollar amount. It just, he pops up when he feels like it. We've got uh, Zydaman93. I want to see Cody win the belt again as a heel. All right, well, wait three years and you'll probably get it. Ultra Beast Boys, remember the days when people dreaded Raw starting off with a 20-minute Triple H promo or a John Cena match? Now everybody gushes over it. I don't know if I'd say gushes. Some people might. I don't... Uh, I'm not one of those people who gushes. If you're going to start out with a 30-minute promo segment, it better be a damn good one. The Rock can get away with it because it's The Rock, right? And he's going away now, so we're not going to see him for a while. But if you're going to put two people in the ring for an opening segment that is going to go 20 or 30 minutes, you better make it at least interesting. Retro KOH, I was there live for Cody's final New Japan match many years ago in the Tokyo Dome. Seeing this come full circle is very cool. Happy to be a fan. You know, he had to leave. He had to leave in order to attain what he has. He had to leave WWE, go away for a while. Without that, he wouldn't be in the position he's in right now. Barry MK says, have you seen that Mick Foley will not do another match after finding out he got a concussion that he did not even know about? I did see that, yes. He has been uh, training to get himself in shape. Using that as motivation, he wants to lose 100 pounds, and then that way he could have one final death match before his 60th birthday next year. And that was the plan, and he's been working out. He's already lost a bunch of weight. I hope he continues to do that. Uh, but he said the reason he wanted to do this death match is because it was an excuse for him to lose the weight, which he felt like he needed to for his knees. And he posted a video on his YouTube. It's like a minute long. And he had a pull out of some appearances uh, last month because of uh, dizziness. Turns out he was concussed. Didn't know it. Has no idea how. And so his family basically had to step in and say, look, you're not doing this match. So he posted a video and said, you know, after consulting with my family, uh, I will no longer be wrestling that final match. Thank God. Thank God he came to his senses. That was a terrible idea from the jump. Man has no business being in the ring. For his own sake, and I don't say that because I think it would be a bad match. I, I don't want to see anything happen to him. He's had so much abuse and head trauma as it is in concussions. He has nothing to prove to anybody. He has so much good that he can continue doing in his life. He does not need to do a death match. Uh, BCOM C clearly fighting depression says uh, sorry solo why me you don't have to apologize brother everybody goes through things in their life unfortunately there's a lot of people like you who are going through that right now and at any given moment and it sucks and it's tough it's hard to climb out of that hole sometimes but the best advice I can give you is just you know keep keep soldiering on man and if you need people to talk to you got friends here in the chat you got friends with me and everybody here Everybody's got good days and bad days. Hopefully you have more good than bad. Somebody wants to know... Uh... Oh, what? This shirt? Well, yeah, this shirt's in the uh, Pro Wrestling Tee store. Along with about 30 other ones, if you were uh, curious. You can get a link to the store in the description down below. That's where you can find all the t-shirts. Oh, boy. Last night was not enough, I see. Blo 
blowing out my eardrums here. It is ABK who did a drive-by, was it last night or Saturday? I think it was last night on the street. And then here he is here tonight. It's ABK. Holy shit. Always be killing it. He is back for the Raw review now. ABK is coming in with a $412 super chat. You know it's a big super chat when you see the vein in my fucking neck about to pop out of my neck. My God. $412 super chat. ABK, always be killing it, always be killing everybody here. Just blowing everybody out of the water here. My God. Hit the deck, everybody, when ABK shows up. Thank you, brother. I'll get to your message here. Hang tight. I promise I'll get to you. Uh, the Carlosa says, think now Triple H is in charge. Ricochet gets a legit push. So much talent going to waste in him. I mean, he's been getting a push. He's been featured on the show. He's been, uh, I think he's won some matches. And he had that great match with JD McDonough a few weeks ago. He was in the main event tonight. Big spot with the 450. You know, just, I, I would say if you're a Ricochet fan, just enjoy it right now. I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know if it's going to lead to anything. But he's been getting a push now for a, for a while now on this show. I just don't see him winning any gold. If that's what you're getting at, I don't, I don't see that. But he's been a pretty featured part of the show. Chris Mikesell. What was the logic for The Rock asking to hold Cody's belt? Are you telling me Paul Heyman hogging that belt around would not let Rock hold it? <laughs> That's true. Heyman's been walking around with that belt now for, for how long? Rock could have just said, hey, Paul, can I, can I hold on to that here? Uh, Prince Vegeta says Cody is listed as an official Universal Champion. Are they not retiring that lineage yet? Uh, evidently not. I hope they do. Alex says, what are your thoughts on the Uncle Howdy teases tonight? What kind of storyline would you see him in? And when does he make his debut? I have no idea. This is the beginning of it. I mean, I only first noticed the glitch tonight. So this is probably going to go on for a while. I have a feeling that he and Alexa Bliss are going to be together. I think they're going to, whatever they're going to do, I feel like she's going to probably come back as Dark Alexa or she's going to have something to do with it. Uh, but as far as like who he feuds with and what what the character looks like, I have no fucking idea. No clue. What is in the mind of Bo Dallas or Rob Fee or whoever it is coming up with the ideas for that character? It's a very weird character to begin with, so it's kind of hard to predict. Uh, Brandon Proctor, wouldn't a triple five knuckle shuffle be a circle jerk? I will see myself out. That's still not as bad as Cena dropping a Cleveland Steamer reference on Raw many years ago when he was feuding with The Rock. Oofman Entertainment with the 10 spot. Speaking of Cena, I saw the Bray Wyatt special. They did a great job with it. And as you know, Cena appears in it. With that said, when did Cena start dressing and sounding like Vince McMahon? Oh, he's been doing that for a while. With those suits. Yeah, I've seen him in a few different things wearing those suits. He and Vince are like this. They're very close. He really does look at Vince as a father figure, so I'm not surprised he starts dressing like him. Hopefully he doesn't start behaving like him. By the way, Vince McMahon and Endeavor. There was another transaction that was revealed earlier. Further diluted from TKO. Vince McMahon is now down to 4.7% ownership of TKO. He loses a little bit less and a little bit less with each, each passing month. Hopefully he'll be diluted down to zero soon enough. Uh, Alex says, is there a difference in emotion or impact when championship matches take place on television rather than a pay-per-view? Of course. Of course. Especially if it's on a show that has a commercial free first hour. Because you know that the title match is going to be absolutely destroyed by commercial breaks. And it just kind of takes you out of the match. 
You know, they, they had that issue when they did the Iron Man match on SmackDown back in 03 with Angle and Lesnar. So you're always going to have to deal with commercial interruptions on TV that you don't have to worry about with a big match on a paper. Ultra Beast Boys would be awesome to see Gable do a wrestling machine type character like Angle in 06. That's what I'm hoping if they do turn him heel. That's what I'm hoping we get more serious wrestling machine type of Chad Gable. Yukio rules. Again, thank you very much for that $51 super chat, Yukio. You are the man. Slapping 45 says a lot of people think Chad might turn after the title match next week, but I think Gunther interferes and we get a backlash rematch later. That's possible. I could see that. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. You beat Gunther. You're going to beat him again? Why? Why beat him twice? He lost. It was a historic run. It's time for him to just move on to something else until he's ready to, you know, be the number one contender for the World Heavyweight title. I wouldn't want to beat him again. You know, and I don't see them putting the belt back on him, so... I'm not so sure I'm a big fan of that idea. Warm corn. Modern day rock looks like an old wise turtle. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Interesting analogy. I didn't realize, but he looked like Elvis last night. Did you see that, that costume, that outfit he walked out there in? He looked like fucking Elvis. Samoan Elvis. Creflo Half Dollar, hey Solo, do you think the crowd would have had Roman fatigue sooner if he was defending the title every month as opposed to every few months? I think they would have just run out of people. I don't think we needed to see him defend every month, but it would have been nice to see him defend more than, you know, five times in a year. Uffman says, France, Germany, Scotland, Cleveland. Yeah, which one does not fit? I forgot about Bash in Berlin at the end of August. That's right. Uh, K Dog's Kennel with the five bucks. Thank you for the amazing job you did for WrestleMania 40 weekend. Not many could pull it off. Nothing but love and respect for you. K Dog, that means a lot. I'm glad you enjoyed the coverage. Thank you very much. I still have a, um, a headache behind my eyes from the lack of sleep, but. I'm here with you. Darth Panic, I want to see Jade Berg against William Regal in a competitive six-minute match. Jade Berg. God, I hope not. There he is. There's the king. Everyone bow down. Everybody, we have a new tribal chief. Everybody put your fingers up in the air for ABK. The Rock gave Cody MJF ring image, but I think The Rock will break Cody's gold watch, the same one that Dusty Rhodes pawned to put Cody through acting school. Yeah, so if you don't know the story, if you missed it last night, when the show was over, Triple H, Bruce Prichard, and Nick Khan uh, presented Cody with the same... Now, now, I still have not clarified I don't believe it's literally the same watch. There are people saying it's the exact same watch that Dusty Pond. There are people saying it's the same kind of watch. It's a very specific type of watch, but it's not the watch. I don't know how they would find the actual watch unless it had some sort of inscription on it. And there was a record of the shop that Dusty Pond did on. Yeah, I mean, it's always possible, I guess, but I don't know that it's the actual watch. I think it's the same type of watch. And I don't think that The Rock is going to do anything to the watch. I, I don't think that's going to come into the story. You know, it's funny that ABK mentions uh, MJF. I'm amazed at how many people last night and again tonight were on social media and were disappointed that there was no MJF. Like, are there people who actually thought MJF was a free agent? Did they buy into the storyline? 
that MJF was still a free agent at this point? I mean, that's cute. I mean, look, kayfabe, you got to keep it alive, I guess. But I don't see how people could be legitimately disappointed and think that MJF was going to show up tonight or at WrestleMania. That's that's amazing to me. Um, Dried chicken and steak without flavor says, I'm celebrating right now due to the Yukon Huskies becoming back-to-back -back national champions like Cody Rhodes going back-to-back -back Royal Rumble wins. Well, congrats to the Huskies. Ultra Beast Boys, ABK should get producer credits. I should, like, tattoo his name, like, into the corner somewhere. Yeah, maybe, maybe, like, ah, oh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, like, permanently embed the name there, like, in the bottom part of the frame or something. I'll have to figure, we'll have to figure something out there. ABK is amazing. ABK is the man. Uh, Devin from NJ says, Now my colleague says that airing the footage on Dynamite is a good detractor for future talent to spread falsehoods about the company. Boy, you get a lot of feedback from your colleague, I notice. Is it from your colleague, or uh, is this one of those situations where it's like, uh, Oh, I have a friend who wants to know. I think you need to stop talking to these colleagues, man. Some of these colleagues have some terrible feedback. Look, I think it's a bad idea. Until I see the footage, we can't know for sure. I still feel like in the at the end of the day, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be something that feeds into the Young Bucks feud with FTR. Uh, maybe it's a way to get Jack Perry back on TV and have him as part of the elite as the scapegoat. And, you know, look, I hope they do turn it into a storyline. At least try to get something out of it. But I just think the whole idea of them suddenly, you know, this week of all weeks promoting this it just it just looks sad it's just a pathetic look that they are still relying on cm punk they are relying on phil brooks to try to pop a number at a time when their numbers are dropping i saw rampage just did its record low number this week record low demo record low number now i, I don't know what the competition there might have been a lot of competition on friday night but the dynamite numbers are concerning you know, and the fact that they have to lean in on this idea of, ooh, you know, all in Wembley. Of course they know, without saying his name, what people are going to think. And we'll see if it's a rating stunt. It's a pure rating stunt. Maybe it'll pay off for them for one week. I just think the whole thing is pathetic. Uh, Philly dry chicken and steak without flavor. It says, name change is coming. I figured it was, you know, now that uh, WrestleMania is over. Arabian Knight says, really want Drew to have his crowning moment and hope it does happen in Glasgow. He's the best thing going right now and very deserving. Do not fumble. He's in a great spot, you know, title or not. He's, he's just been doing fucking great work. Like, he's become my favorite promo. You know, and I wouldn't have said that a year ago. I would have been like, no, Drew McIntyre is my favorite promo. What do you want, crack? And it's amazing, the transformation that this man has had on TV. I look forward to his segments. That's how good he is. Dr. Bropio, hear me on this. Alexa comes back with a rapper gimmick. Lil Ms. Bliss. I will find the quickest exit. Yeah, please do. Because if you don't, I'm a little worried that Bliss fan may throw something. Rick Gotti, buy or sell, WrestleMania 15 or WrestleMania 40? I mean, how is that even a question? WrestleMania 40. Wrestle WrestleMania 15 was not a great WrestleMania. I like the main event. I actually like the main event with Rock and Austin. Uh, but that was not a great WrestleMania. The comedic genius, Samoan Elvis, laughing my ass off. Fun week we had... Yes, we did. We had a we had a fun weekend here. At least I hope you guys did. Had a fun weekend. Barry MK with a five dollar super chat. Imagine if WWE did something like AEW was doing with the brawl in footage with Brett and Sean after Survivor Series in '97. I wanted them to. <laughs> Actually, they kind of they kind of did. 
but they didn't put it on TV. They put it on one of the Coliseum videos. It was the Survivor Series video. And they like build it as uh, exclusive, never before seen footage. And it was nonsense. It was, you know what it was? It was when they went off the air, it was Brett doing the uh, finger, you know, the, the finger salute, like WCW, the initials. And uh, throwing the monitors down at ringside. But they build it like, oh, exclusive, never before seen footage from Montreal. And I was like, I gotta buy the tape. And then I was like, that's it? But yeah, they didn't put it. I'll tell you what though, Vince McMahon, if he thought he could pop a number with that footage, he would not have hesitated back then against WCW head to head. Ah, oh, he's back. He's back again. He is back again. Look at this man. We're having a party here on the street. We're very hard. Look at this man, my God. A B K is back again with a two hundred and six dollar super chat. Thank you for all your hard work dedication to entertaining us with your streams your passion for what you do truly shines through and it is greatly appreciated i am happy that uh it comes through to you guys because i enjoy what i do even when i'm tired or i'm miserable or there's a terrible show we, we've seen plenty of those uh when i'm able to hang out here with you guys and you guys crack me up sometimes I feel like sometimes the streams are more entertaining than the shows themselves. Like, we have seen some bad television shows. <clears throat> Raw, SmackDown, Dynamite, all kinds of bad shows. And very often, we end up having more fun here than just sitting and watching the shows. But I'm glad that comes through. Hey, ABK, man. Holy shit. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You know what, ABK? We, we may as well reveal to the world the real truth here, where uh, ABK is on the board. Just like The Rock is. The Rock is the final boss. ABK has a seat on the board, so... He's, you know, he's a big shot. This guy. Uh, Dr. Bropio, does AEW win sad promotion of the week? Uh, TBD. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens on Wednesday. Preflo half dollar. After this weekend, you should treat yourself to dinner at Hudson Yards or Zbarro. A low-key moment from McAfee was saying, good job, guys, when The Rock announced the largest gathering of trailer trash. Well, I'm not going to be eating at Zbarro. It's been many years since I ate there, but I, I can't have any of that stuff anymore, so. That's not an option, unfortunately. Uh, Stephen J. Neptune Man. What if what Rock gave Cody was a pedal from Roman's lay? And it's how we find out that Roman was kicked out of the bloodline. Um, that would be interesting, but I don't think so. It's just, if there was something in his hand, why would Cody not have revealed it? Or why would the camera not have shown it? So, I don't... And the way he the way he talked about it, like you know what it is, like how would Cody know what it is? That's an interesting idea. Uh, I don't I don't think that's what is going to end up being revealed. Uh, the Juliet says still no WrestleMania 41 announcement. You know, especially if they are going to be in Minneapolis, I, I wonder if you know Nick Khan just said that they're they're considering moving WrestleMania to late April. Now that's not Northeast, but maybe they are still working out the dates, you know, because of, of like what he was talking about. Maybe maybe WrestleMania next year is gonna be late April and they just haven't nailed down the dates yet. Maybe, that, maybe that's the holdup. Arabian Night says, buy, sell, rent. WrestleMania 19, 31, or 40. Um, I don't know. I, I would I would buy and rent on uh, 31 and 40. I don't know. You know, 19 was 19 was a good one though. 
that's tough because I, I really enjoyed 31 and I was at 31 and that was that was a good WrestleMania despite the sting finish. Uh, <laughs> we won't get into that. I don't know. They're all very good. They're all they're all very good shows. Um, I don't know which one I would put at the top of the list right now. But I think what I would probably do. Oh, my God. That of all super chats to see right now. <laughs> Must we see this? I keep forgetting I have that in there. That's a little bit more of Hulk Hogan than Look I care everyone, to see. It's Samoa bro. Hey, DL Hudson, thank you for the Samoa Bro Super Chat. DL chiming in. Uh, that's a good one, though. That's a good one. You stumped me. I don't really know what order I would put them in right now. Because they're all very good, but... Um, it's hard to vote against 19, though. Because it was a very good one. I just don't know. Uh, powerful one, Okada post-IWGP title gimmick from Roman. That'd be great. Remember we had broken Okada for a while? He basically had uh, emotional support balloons that he would take everywhere with him because he was so just depressed over losing the championship. They're not going to do that with Roman. They're not, not going to turn Roman into a comedy gimmick. But I think that would be fucking hilarious. If they did something similar, I think that would be great. They ain't never going to do it, but I'd love to see it. Uh, hey, Daniel Malcolm says, buy, sell, rent. Yes, yeet, and woo. I mean, how, how, how can you buy on anything other than woo? Right? You got to buy on you or woo. Oh, my God. I'm so tired. Uh, buy on woo, rent on yes, and sell on yeet. Get fucking yeet the hell out of here. I fucking, uh, fucking hate that. Anyway, thank you for the uh, super chat love, man, especially ABK and everybody else, too, man. You guys, unbelievable. We had a big WrestleMania weekend, and sometimes things end up dying a death coming out of WrestleMania, but you have carried that over here into Monday night, and I appreciate that. The goal tonight for Be The Booker was... 500 likes. We are currently sitting well over 700 likes. So give yourselves a round of applause and let us go ahead and be the booker. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to be the booker. There he is. Your raw tag team champion, R-Truth. He's moseying on in between Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. That moment right there is one of the highlights of the show tonight. Took him a few seconds to realize that he was in there. Oh, R-Truth. So disappointing to see R-Truth uh, post an approval on Instagram the other day, agreeing with Vince McMahon's trainer that uh, everybody has turned their backs on him. So disappointing, but I still like R-Truth. All right, here we go. Tag team, be the booker. Kick things off here. Let me see those B2B emojis from our channel members. We got a lot of new channel members. I think Justin G, I believe, uh, gifted five of them. We had a bunch of gifted ones earlier. Thank you to the ones who gifted them. But uh, yeah, let me see those Be The Booker emojis in the chat. All right, here we go. We have, oh, it's Cherry in the middle with Deuce and Domino. Remember Deuce and Domino and Cherry? No? See, those tag team belts, those are the SmackDown tag belts from the early 2000s. How are you going to have belts that still look the way that the belts look now? The, like the tag belts? And tell me that these don't look better than the ones we have now. Why can't we go back to something like that? Deuce and Domino are going to be taking on Brett. I see Owen. Sometimes I say Brett. I get confused. Owen Hart and the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith, against Deuce and Domino. Uh, I'm so tempted to hit the buzzer right now. Deuce and Domino were, were a fucking jobber act, basically, for, for the longest time in WWE. 
Ah, it's Owen and Bulldog. I can't vote against it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I got to give them the bell. They were a great team. They were a great tag team. All right, women's be the booker. I was a little on the fence there. Could have gone either way. I went with the uh, with the bell. All right, we begin with Victoria. Or Tara. You can call her Tara from TNA. I will call her Victoria. She will always be Victoria to me. And it will be Victoria. One-on-one. -on -one, with Sol Ruka. I want to see Sol Ruka hit her finish on Victoria. Because she's got one of the best finishing maneuvers in all of wrestling. It's very convoluted. But it's great to look at. Victoria is great. Sol Ruka, I think, has the potential to be a big star for them down the road. Victoria would probably give her her best match. All right, we're two for two. Now it takes us into the main event. It's time for the main event here in Be The Booker. We are kicking things off with Mankind. I like where this is headed. Mankind is my favorite of all the Foley characters. Oh, I hope we land on Undertaker. Mankind against the Giant Gonzalez. Oh, man. Look at this furry fucker. Look at that costume. There is nobody, I don't think there's anybody, that I could have landed on there where I would have given it anything other than the buzzer. And when I say that, I mean as far as uh, anybody that would be in the ring with the Giant Gonzalez. You could take Carl Gotch. You could take George Hackenschmidt. You could take Brett the Hitman Hart or Kurt Angle, and put them in the ring with the giant Gonzalez, and I don't think it would make a lick of difference. Awful. Omos, the great Kali, no. That'd be even worse. You know what, I'll tell you what, we'll make it a triple threat match, how about that? Morbidly curious here to see what we land on here. We got Mankind, we have the giant Gonzalez, now, if we land on somebody good, they could knock the giant out of the ring, let him lay on the outside for most of the match, and then we could have Mankind and the other person go one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's a good thing I didn't just eat. This photo will never not make me just lose my shit. Chris Jericho. It is the pain maker. <laughs> Look at this guy. It is the pain maker. <laughs> it's like he's flexing. Uh, mid <laughs> midlife crisis, Jerrica. I don't know what this is, but I need to get this off the screen is what I need. That's what I need to do. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Stephen J. Neptune Man. Announced for Dynamite, a Samoan named Joe against a member of the Rhodes family. Yeah, I don't know how many of you saw. Uh... Samoa Joe is <laughs> Samoa Joe is going to be wrestling Dustin Rhodes uh, on Dynamite this week. So we we are getting a Samoan named Joe against a member of the Rhodes family. Second time this week. 
So there you go. Uh, Dr. Bropio is coming in here. Be the Booker wins said, <laughs> said promotion. Yeah, I think, I think we do win said promotion tonight. The Giant Gonzalez, that version of Jericho, whatever the fuck that was, and Mankind as a main event. And, uh, yeah, I, I would say we win sad promotion for this week. No, that is not my screensaver. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, anyway. Dynamite is going to be a very interesting show on Wednesday night. Uh, because they are airing some kind of footage from backstage at Wembley Stadium, and so we shall see what the what the footage is. And uh, we're getting Joe and Dustin, and I don't have the full card in front of me, but uh, those are the key two of the key things that have been announced for Wednesday night. So one way or another, it's going to be a very interesting review on Wednesday night. You will want to make sure, even if you are not an AEW fan, that you are tuned in. Or the AEW stream on Wednesday. That is the next time I will be with you live. And then, of course, big SmackDown. Post-WrestleMania SmackDown coming up on Friday. Still a chance that Roman Reigns could end up on the outside of the bloodline looking in. Could happen on Friday. So uh, hopefully you guys will join me for that. To everybody who stuck with me over the last three days. and Super chatted and bought a membership or gifted them. To other people, I say thank you very much. We still have uh, messages coming in here. Creflo says, send for the man. And Ultra Beast Boys says, booking Heroes of Wrestling 2. We didn't need Heroes of Wrestling 1. I don't need to be booking Heroes of Wrestling 2. What are we thinking here? What's the consensus in the chat? Do you actually think that we will see footage? The footage? Of Punk and Jack Perry. Yay or nay? Yay or nay? <laughs> Matthew is still laughing at the pain maker. You're not the only one. Could get new members of the bloodline on Friday? Very possible. We know Tama, we know Tama is in. I still I'm I'm not seeing uh, confirmation from multiple places about Jacob Fatu, but assuming he is in, let's see either one of them on Friday. You never know. All right, we got a very mixed reaction here. We got some yays, we got some nays. The reports are that they are legitimately showing footage of some kind. This is not a bait and switch. It's not a swerve. That's what the reports were. I know that's what Sapp was reporting. That's what, or at least that's what he's being told. We'll see. One thing that we are not seeing, though, is footage of uh, Tony Khan fearing for his life. Apparently that is not being shown or that was not or that did not happen to be on video. But that is not what is being shown. So we'll find out on Wednesday night. Until then, be well. Stay safe. Thank you for all of the super chats. And when you lay your head down on the pillow tonight to go to bed, I want you to think about the pain maker, and I wish you sweet dreams. We'll see you right back here for the Dynamite Recap on Wednesday night. Hit that like button on your way out. I'll see you then. Take care, guys.